All right, so it's uh, more or less day three of actually working this week. Um, we had a couple, few weeks ago where I removed the interior, um, kind of got it ready for the paint party. So let's call that week one or day one because it shouldn't have taken me more than a day, but it did. Um, now we have evening three after work, normal time uh, work on sessions where we're doing the actual teardown. So the goal here is to remove any and all superfluous metal, just stuff that we don't need. Um, the trunk for one, the uh, tonneau cover, the, the A-frames for the windshield. Uh, we still have to work on the front a little bit, the um, uh, radiator support, all of that stuff, it's all going. So the idea is to reduce as much weight as possible while maintaining as much rigidity as possible. Obviously, I know cutting things out is going to reduce rigidity, but if I can maintain as much rigidity as possible while losing weight, then theoretically, uh, it should net more rigid. So the way I'm maintaining rigidity is by keeping in pinch welds whenever possible. So when you have two pieces of metal that come together and then get folded, that is actually a pretty strong seam. So I'm trying to maintain those wherever I can. There's a few places where they're still gonna get cut out uh, just for like safety of not having sharp ass edges hanging out all over the place. But for the most part, I'm gonna try and keep as many of them in as possible. So, so far, what we've cut out is a lot. <laughs> we were working last night and went through five um, reciprocating saw blades. Uh, I made the mistake of getting six inch blades and they're just a little too short so they kept pounding into the next sheet of metal and bending and going all crazy. Uh, but today I've got the nine inch blades and it made everything go so much faster. So I got started before Jay got here because I have a hard time uh, maintaining attention span on anything. So I saw, oh, hey, there's things I can cut and I cut them. So I'm almost done with the passenger rear fender area. So I've got a little bit more uh, stuff to cover up, to cut up here. Um, we'll do a walk around in a minute, but uh, I basically have uncovered where the um, cage is going to weld into. The the one of the points of the the mounting plate for the cage is going to go there. Uh, so I'll have to do that on the other side, and then the front fenders and all that stuff has to go. So for cage specs, though, I want it to be able to actually enter in a, a number of different types of races. So I'm looking at, I'm trying to look at specs for all of the, not all, but most of the different race series, whether it's SCCA or SCCA Rally or um, like the WRC or general like, Formula D, whatever whatever specs I can, if I can find commonality between them, I'm gonna try and, and make that into a cage. And it seems to be, for the most part, they're all pretty similar. Some of them, like Pikes Peak, has really very specific uh, requirements for the cages, um, but I doubt that will be an issue. So um, in the back here is where the, the back plates will mount on the for the cage, um, just behind the driver and passenger is where the, the main hoop will mount. And then just in the front of the, the doorway, the, the door opening is where the front, the A pillars will mount. So there's six points right there. There will be a crossbar that goes uh, between the two A pillars to kind of tie those together. And then there will be crossbars that kind of come in the center behind the, um, behind the main hoop. So there have been some updates on the Miata that we haven't filmed or documented uh, in the last month. And it's mostly just been a couple parts that we got. Uh, first and foremost, my favorite part. Look at them sick puppies. Uh, SSR, S, what is it? SSR, SP1Rs. So we got these guys, uh, 16 by eight and a half in the front and 16 by nine and a half in the back. Got that sweet, sweet offset. Mm-hmm, nice wide. Uh, this is a great case of uh, just watch Craigslist. Pay attention to Craigslist. When people post stuff, jump on it. This this listing went up one day and I had them in my, in my van 
uh, within like an hour of them getting posted. Uh, I got these all four wheels and tires. Um, I think it was thirteen hundred dollars. So that's the big one. That's my favorite thing so far. Uh, we still have the other wheels as drift spares back there in the corner. We, we might use them. We might not. Who knows? Try and sell them. We'll see. Um, next thing that we did, that I did, that we did was uh, relocated the uh, air filter. So stock Miata, this guy goes all the way over here and then comes out here and the air box mounts over this way. It's just a lot of extra junk in the way and I didn't want all of that extra junk. So not to mention uh, this debate about it, but uh, there are a lot of people who say that the shorter you can get the uh, intake path, the better, the faster your throttle response, all that kind of stuff. There are people who say that there are downsides, like you lose uh, torque, but uh, I think it's debatable. Anyway, I think the more important thing here is that I'm not drawing air from the hot side of the engine. So we have the exhaust manifold here, which will eventually you know, get replaced, whatever, but um, the exhaust manifold is super hot, even with all the heat shielding, super, super hot. And the hotter your air that you draw in, the less dense it is. So less dense air means less fuel, means less power. So my thought is relocate it to the other side. Um, there's cold air on that side. Should be a negligible amount of power. Uh, anyway, this is a aluminum U-Bend on Amazon. And we'll put up on the screen the exact specs, the, the part number or whatever. Um, we got some random, I think these are Vibrant, which is probably the, I think it's the silicone hoses straight from Pep Boys. So uh, just generic silicone hoses, generic uh, T-clamps, generic uh, aluminum pipe. Uh, we'll put all the sizes up on the screen. Uh, and then also generic um, air filter too. So uh, I've tested it, it sounds pretty cool. I haven't run it yet because, you know, um, radiator's not hooked up, but anyway. Last weekend, Jay and I went to Sonoma, Sonoma Raceway and they happened to be having um, a pretty pretty awesome sale actually on seats. Actually, they were having a sale on everything, but we ended up picking up seats. So these are OMP TRS EXLs. The XL because thick boys. Uh, they're the only seats that would fit both of our asses. So that's the ones we got. Uh, I didn't order any brackets. I need to order brackets or I'll make brackets. Oh, by the way. Okay. Other additions. So I'm going to take a break from the car for a second. The car's still cool. Uh, other additions to the shop. I made a new workbench. It's big. Uh, you can clamp stuff to it. It's messy right now. I spent most of the weekend trying uh, reorganizing all of the tool shelves and all of the drawers, uh, but I'm not done yet and I'm lazy and I don't want to finish it. But new workbench. So that's all kinds of awesome. Uh, we got a welder, finally. A generic, kind of cheapy, not super cheap. It was like 800 bucks on Amazon. Uh, it's a MIGTIG. It is, a, well, it's like a MIGTIG arc. So it's a three process, but I'm never gonna arc weld. Um, we got the gloves, we got the mask, we've got the hoses and all that kind of stuff. I've done a couple practice welds and I'm not like professional, but I think I'll be able to get the job done. Uh, so that's ready to go. Now all we have to get is a pipe bender. And I have all of those parts queued up, just waiting for the, you know, the credit, the credit cards to get paid down a little bit. Okay, so back to the car. Big thing about, big problem with moving the, um, the intake like this is we're still planning on running stock ECU and stock ECU requires a mass airflow sensor, a MAF. Um, and the wiring on the math initially, originally came through this guy right here. I think you probably see it. Um, that guy right there into the, the passenger side or the driver's side of the car. And because of that, it's wired to go that way. So all of the wires are loomed for the driver's side and I don't want any of that. So what I've done is created bit of a nightmare for myself. Basically with everything unplugged, the car still runs and that's all I care about. Um, so everything that is currently unplugged, yeah, everything that's unplugged, 
with the car still running, those wires are all gonna get eliminated. I'm gonna de-loom the entire thing and then just run the math wires. So I still have a bunch of wires, like these are, you know, uh, headlights and I don't know what these are for, but they're not plugged in, so they can't be important. Um, I'm probably gonna leave this one, like wiper motors. So there's a bunch of stuff like that that's still in here um, that will I'll try to eliminate as much of it as, as much of it as possible. <sighs> anyway, so uh, wiring elimination is the process I'm gonna get started on this weekend uh, as much as possible. I'm probably, I mean, it's like five o'clock on Sunday, so let's be honest, I'm not gonna get it done. But uh, come back next weekend and, and finish it up and then we'll update. But uh, for now, I'm probably gonna jump to a time lapse so you can see. It's really boring. You're not gonna wanna watch that, but I'm gonna jump to a time lapse so you can see what I'm doing. created a massive mess for myself, but what I did is unplugged everything, every fuse, every relay, everything that was in the cabin, cab, cabin, cockpit, whatever you want to call it, everything that was in here got unplugged uh, and I still, the, the car still started. So now all I have to do is take every empty plug and wire them out, or not wire them out, and uh, cut them out, essentially. Um, but that's gonna have to wait until next weekend. I'm gonna do one more startup just because I like the way it sounds. Uh, we'll do that real quick. So it still runs. Um, like I said, next weekend, gonna start taking all the wires out, all the unnecessary wires out. I'm gonna come back with the ECU pin out. So every wire that's coming out of here, I'll figure out exactly what it does. And uh, I'll, I'll essentially cut them from the base here. So that way I can de them that from that side as well. So uh, still a lot of work to do just on the wiring, but pretty soon, once that's all cleaned up and done, then all that's left is to kind of clean up all these cuts with the angle grinder and then start building the cage. Uh, we should have a pipe bender pretty soon. Um, and then yeah, once I get the pipe bender, order some pipes, test it out, and then start doing it. So yeah, hope the next week.